Okay, let's take a tour of the 4-bit computer simulator, which models the main functional components of a digital computer. So you have random access memory, where instructions are stored and data are stored. And notice that the, the reason this is called a 4-bit computer is these are the memory locations, and they're all represented by 4 bits. So the, they run from 0 to 15 in binary. The first eight are for instructions, and the next eight are for data. The central processing unit is over here, and it has some special registers. And it also has a, a little documentation of its instruction set. And finally, you have a monitor for the output and a keyboard for some input operations. Let's talk about the memory. As I said, the first eight locations are for instructions. So if you hover over these, you'll see these are machine language instructions. And the next eight are for data. Since so you hover over them, you'll see that the data is represented in binary in the memory, but you can peek at it in decimal as shown here. So this is saying that the data at address eight, this is address eight in binary, is one. So this is the value one. This is the value two stored here. Let's next talk about instructions. And so the instruction set for this machine has four bit instructions and here they are and these they're represented by these binary codes so this binary code which is if you thought of it as a number it would be the number one means load the value at x to the accumulator so the the instruction is actually made of two parts the op code the four bit instruction code followed by an operand and an operand is always a four bit memory address so for example Going back to this case here, this is the instruction load 1000. So the opcode part of it is the first four bits. That corresponds to load here. And the second four bits correspond to a four-bit memory address. So it corresponds to this memory address right here. So what we're saying here is load the value at memory location 1000 into the accumulator. And that's what will happen if you fetch and execute that instruction. So let's do that. So you see what happened is the instruction that we had over here was put into the instruction register, broken into two parts, its opcode and its operand. The instruction means load the value at location 1000 into the accumulator. So we've fetched that instruction. Notice, by the way, when we fetch the instruction, the instruction counter goes to the next instruction that will be fetched. So next time we click the fetch button, the instruction at location 0001 will be fetched. So the second part of the fetch execute cycle is the execute. So let's execute this instruction. We're going to execute load the value at 1000 into the accumulator. So you're going to see the accumulator change. So I execute and you see the value 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 001 was put in there, which is this value right here. Okay, there's an extra space in to make it a little more readable. And it reports that the value 1 is in the accumulator. Okay, so let's do that again. When I fetch this time, I'm going to be fetching this instruction. It's going to go into this instruction register. And this counter is going to go up to 0010, which is 2. Fetch. Okay. And when I execute, I'm going to be executing this instruction. Well, what instruction is that? That is 0011. So that's add. And the address we're going to be adding from is 1001. So it's this address. So I'm adding the value 2 to the accumulator. So what we should see here is the value 3. So execute. And indeed, the value 3 goes into the accumulator. And we would similarly fetch the next instruction. 0, 0, 1, 0. This is a store operation. 0, 0, 1, 0. And where are we going to store the value? We're going to store it at 1, 0, 1, 0. So we're going to take what's in the accumulator, this value, and put it in 1, 0, 1, 0. So let's do that. Execute. So now this has the value 3 in it. And let's fetch the next instruction. And it is a 1, 0, 0, 0. That's a print instruction. What are we going to print? We're going to print the value in 1010. Well, that's the value we just put there. That's 3. So when I execute this instruction, we should see some output. Indeed, the value 3 is output to the monitor. Okay, so that's how you can step through the program. You can also run the program straight through from the beginning, uh, meaning you'll reset the instruction counter to 0 
and it'll run through all the instructions until it encounters a no-op. Uh, so the no-op is in uh, at location 1000, which is location 4. So that explains the fetch and execute and the run. And the, the restart button, by the way, will uh, load, uh, will reset all of the memory locations. So let's do that. Everything sets to zero. We can get that program back by just reloading the page, though. So that's not a problem. Reset button over here, if I keep fetching and executing and fetching and executing, if I make a mistake and I want to reset and start the program over, I can reset. It just resets the CPU. It doesn't change what's in memory. So you see it's gone back to zero and everything is still the same as it was in memory. Okay, so that's a, a quick tour. Now it'll be your turn to play with it on some exercises.